drop the man on you. Uh, I don't plan on being all on you know how, how it goes on these road trips. I'm trying to get to the spot and unwind with the guys, but I, I gotta drop this on you. Uh, look, first and foremost, if you like what you hear and see on this channel, click the like button, click the share button, and subscribe. Uh, with that out the way, for those of you who have followed the work that I've done over the past 30 years in research and program development and engaging community issues, um, you know the work we're doing right now, we're in the midst of a major research program for mental health in men, uh, dealing with recidivism, uh, connected with the Harris County Sheriff's Office here in Houston, uh, doing work on epigenetics and all of that. We need your support in that area. We also need your support in directly engaging these in the hood. We have a, a, a marked increase in black men who are finally showing up and seeking professional help for the mental health. Uh, the ones who can afford the work we've got, you know, it's easy placement for that. Those that are showing up to work with me, it's easy placement for the people who can show up and pay. Um, for those who don't have the resources, we need to fill that gap. I do as much as I can pro bono, but this demand is too great for me to take on that. I'll be sitting around in somebody's soup kitchen myself. We've got to take that on. And so look in the description box and look at how you can support our work and give. It's that simple. Uh, nothing is done uh, through osmosis or wishful thinking. It's done through people willing to do the work and pill people willing to fund it and finance it and it's that simple we will never get on as long as everybody stands back on the sideline pumping their fists and cheering cheering feels good it's glad to know people have your back it's glad to hear the uh that's awesome doc uh it's glad to hear man we really love what you're doing doc all that none of that takes care of the resourcing of the work that's being done keep that in mind look on on, on somewhat of a similar note i want to talk to you as everybody reacted to the temporary blackout of Facebook and Instagram, um, it, it really gave me some time to really look at where we are as a people. With, you know, I do a lot of my data gathering from social media because they make it so easy because it's created for the purpose of getting people to reveal things that it, it could take forever. You can do a political survey that would take months and a day now and you can survey people on their spending habits you can survey and the beautiful thing about social media is people are literally trained to give you answers you just post a comment and ask and people show up and do you things that people would not normally have done in the past it's things that would have been difficult to get people to do in the past now people are doing it with little uh, encouragement whatsoever. They just figure out, people just figure when someone posts something, I'm obligated to respond to it. And you get it. So I get all that. So having access to that and being able to do what I do on a regular basis uh, is important. But what I also watch is I watch responses to all different types of things. And what I saw uh, with how shook we were at that 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 app shutting down for I don't know however long it was shutting down and um, from what I hear it was both meta platforms which is Facebook and um, Instagram but the, the the conversation and the and the chatter once it was back up the the oh my gods and don't do me like this and all of that, man. What would happen if we took that same energy and invested it in the betterment of our people? What if we were that interested? What if we were drawn to be involved in something as much as we're drawn to be engaged in predominantly nothingness on social media? And I'm not saying nothing good happens. People are promoting their businesses on social media. It's a great advertising platform. It's a great brand. Facebook is probably the best online branding for platform out there. So for people that are doing that, I get that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the things that we do 
uh, things that we do on there that basically amounts to wasting time giggling and gatting as my grandmother would say and a bunch of other things when we really could actually be building and I mean even on the platform building but literally sitting down building you got people with ideas you got people with programs you got people on a mission and you get dust I, and I'll give you a prime example if I study the top 10 black influencers you're going to find that their content is highly sensational um, or they have a very strong marketing budget uh, to push and promote to draw, draw people to their content what you're going to find is even in their content you're going to find that the more significant and weighty matters don't get attention and the funnier, more entertaining, more gossipy, more drama-filled content does. At some point, we've got to ask ourselves, why is this? At some points, we at some point we got to say, where did we pick up the propensity to lean towards shallow thinking, shallow movement, shallow engagement? Where did we become? thirsty for sensationalism versus uh, substance we, 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 we have to answer that question because in the answering of that question is the birthing of the solution of the black enigma and as long as we are sitting around and that's our reality we're more worried about Facebook being down than we are about the wealth gap we're more worried about Facebook being down than we are about um the disproportionality uh, in uh, health care and health care services as it pertains to black women and the and the heightened uh, rate of maternal uh, deaths among black women versus non-black women and how that has played out. We, 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 we're not caught up in that. That's not important enough to us to make it to make it a an everyday engagement, an everyday challenge. Nobody is picking up the mantles. Nobody is taking on the torches. Nobody is sitting up and saying, that's the thing I'm going to get behind. That's the thing I'm going to stand for. This is going to be where I'm going to rest my hand and I'm going to push and I'm going to fight and I'm going to be a part of the solution. Everybody is just on there, taking time, engaging, going to work, coming home, getting on social media, sharing the funny stuff. And I trust me, laughing is a part of healing to me. So nobody's sitting up saying you're not supposed to laugh. What I'm sitting up saying is la laughing will not change policies that are in place uh, that work against our interests. Laughing will not deal with or change what's going on in public school systems. Laughing is not going to change the disproportionality and, and inequity in the uh, wealth gain. This wealth gap is widening. Uh, while we're being convinced that we're making progress, they are becoming more wealthy at a more rapid pace. And all that means is what we do accumulate has little to no value. It's about, it's not about what you have, it's about what you have in reference to what others have. And as long as what you have is consistently less than what others have, you have nothing of any significant power. You still are dependent upon them and you're still at their mercy. We have got to change our focus. We have got to get involved. It's got to go beyond the chatter. We have got to do something different. I just had to say that. I just had to say it. Um, take it how you want to take it. Do what you want to with it. But ultimately, at the end of the day, we have a problem. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I'm going to get in and try to relax and unwind. It's been a crazy year. I ain't going to even say a week. This year has been crazy but I am accepting the challenge because behind that challenge is some pretty remarkable things. And I'm excited about it as I always am. I wake up every day excited. I wake up every day because it's another day, another opportunity to do something exceptional, to do something 
extraordinary to do something phenomenal and that's what I aim to do every day um, and at the same time I wake up every day loving my people loving the assignment that I'm given amongst my people and committed to finding a way to shake the tree and wake my people up to the importance of where we at and the urgency of now and so again I thank you Again, I ask that if you believe in the work that we're doing in research and program development, in community engagement, in mental health and domestic violence, uh, in uh, public education advocacy, uh, uh, dealing with cutting recidivism and all the work we're doing in the community on that, if you haven't seen it, you need to check out my um, symposium on uh, epigenetics and the direct connection with the microaggressions of law enforcement and recidivism and all of this stuff that's going on. That's 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 actually one of the videos on this channel, a symposium I did in January here in Houston uh, in the Greens Point area in conjunction with Wellspring Family Institute and Clinic and the Harris County Sheriff's Office. There's work to be done. So look in the description box see how you can give and show some love and support uh, on that note and, and 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 think about what it takes to do research the average the low on the low end research is thirty thousand to fifty thousand dollars literally that's on the low end more comprehensive um elongated studies can run anywhere from two hundred thousand to over a million dollars these are little studies and here's the crazy thing about this they are doing studies on you, but they're not doing them to help you and find solutions. They are doing studies on you to find out how to best control you, what type of propaganda you respond to, how you respond to microaggressions and the stress that is incessantly resting upon you epigenetically. Um, they know that they're killing you slowly, but quicker than they, they are dying. And it's up to us to sit up and come up with real true solutions for our problems, not to ask our uh, opposers to do it. So once again, I'm, I'm challenging you to step up and think about what's at hand and become a part of the solution. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of the day. Oh, I, this weekend, I forgot. I am speaking to a youth group on Sunday, um, something I do consistently but i'm speaking to you at a church on sunday at 11 o'clock if you have to be in houston swing by holy temple church of god in christ in sunnyside swing by and check your boy out uh this is why i love working with the babies and i need you know at least the youth that they go from little kids all the way up to 30 but i i, I love dealing with them i'm gonna be there talking to them about stewardship and uh, my focus is going to be on what are you doing with what God gave you, guarding the gift. And so you guys, uh, if you're in the Houston area, check me out. But there should be uh, something uploaded uh, sometime after Sunday so you guys can check it out if not. But whatever you do, man, it's time to put in this work. On that note, look, I'm getting out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.